All right, so most of you guys know that I've done a bunch of gimbal reviews here on the channel, but one of the things that I have not talked about too much is why I love using them so much and why I'm always uh, using them in a lot of my shots. And so I wanna talk about a couple different shots that I love to use for wedding specifically, although you can apply these to a lot of other areas, but these are five shots that I use all the time in weddings. And one of the reasons that I use gimbals is because it allows me to be extremely mobile. I can change up my shot, get a different angle, perspective, completely different shot in a matter of seconds versus uh, setting up on a tripod or sliders or other methods for pulling off a shot or just handheld. Uh, I like this a little bit better because it gives me more cinematic type of shots or a better variation of shots than I can get strictly handheld. So for those two reasons, I prefer a gimbal than going handheld or with doing like a tripod or slider or some other method of that. So this is the Gion Crane 3 Lab and it's a gimbal I've been using for uh, probably just a couple months now. And it's been really great for everything I've thrown at it. It holds accessories really well. It's a brand new design from them and a really unique one. So we're gonna talk about how I use this on a wedding day and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll be hanging out there to be able to answer those for you. Now, one of the myths I keep hearing, and I'm not quite sure why, I think it's from people who haven't used gimbals before or haven't figured out how to integrate them properly, is that they're either overused or uh, can get too heavy. Uh, it's, a, it's a type of shot that you shouldn't really have at a wedding. And so I really wanna dispel a lot of those myths. And there is actually a bonus tip at the end, which will show you a different way of using a gimbal. So if you've ever heard that before, or if you're one of those people who is saying that, Stay tuned for that last one. I think that bonus tip is really going to get rid of all reservations you have with gimbals and really revolutionize the way that you use them. So the first type of shot I use is called a pursuit. And generally what I'll do is I'll hold the gimbal usually about waist level or chest level like this. You can go lower if you want to for that kind of shot, but it's usually the way that I will go. I often shoot this in slow motion just because there are so many distractions on a wedding day that it can be very easy for a bride to all of a sudden start fixing her dress or look the other way as a bridesmaid is doing something. So oftentimes you get like two to three seconds of good emotion and footage. And so by shooting 60p or 120p, it will allow me to slow that shot down and turn those two to three good seconds into uh, six to nine good seconds and really get a usable shot out of something that wasn't quite there before. And I can always speed it up to go real time if I need to, in case they gave me a bunch of time of awesome usable footage, I'll speed that up and go real time in it. But what the pursuit is, is I will begin to follow them around. Oftentimes, they're just walking from one location to the other. So this gives me the opportunity. I'll give them some instructions sometimes if there's a moment happening and say, just look at each other, look back at me, uh, have a little moment with each other, kind of dance around. So these are some of the instructions that you can tell them while you're doing this follow shot. It works if you're in front of them or behind them. And uh, sometimes you can really vary it up. So have uh, you step back and have the bride walk into the shot, walk into the groom. You can follow them around as they're moving into the wedding dress. I use this a lot for the bride as she's walking towards the wedding dress, kind of introducing the dress. And so there's a lot of ways to use this shot, but yeah, Pursuit is probably my favorite one, the one I use the most often and the easiest to pull off. So the second one is a dolly in or punch in. And this is a really great shot for weddings, I think because a lot of the time, if your photographer is controlling the situation, they're having them maintain a pose for like seven, 10 seconds. And this is horrible for video. Nobody wants to see somebody just hold a moment static in time. Video is all about movement and emotion and things like that. And, and it really, it kills it when a, uh, when a photographer does that. And so for those moments where where you can control the situation and have them interact with each other, that's great. But for those moments where the photographer is shooting a lot of static portraits, what I will do is the punch in. And honestly, this is it. It is going to be taking the gimbal and just moving a little bit forward to introduce it or moving a little bit backwards. And it's ideal if you have uh, something in the shot that's gonna give kind of a perspective. So a tree, columns, whatever the case may be to let you know or let the subject know watching it that you are moving into the shot. They're seeing that perspective change. 
as you move in. And the other thing that I will do with this is sometimes vary it up, have the couple start behind me and I reverse as they kind of push into it and it kind of introduces them into the scene. So there's a couple unique ways of using this, but really the main reason I do it is because it can give those otherwise static and dull shots some movement and some really cinematic style movement that works for a wedding video. That kind of introduces a third movement and that is going to be the reveal. And this is something that I used to do all the time with a slider and I still use motorized sliders. It's on this camera right here that's giving you that motion. So, but this is gonna allow me to do some of that movement and I'm going to start from around a corner, around a window and basically move in. And the thing that I like about a gimbal is it allows me to not just pan, but pan and twist with it. So I can get that really nice revealing movement straight from a gimbal like this. And it's a great way of introducing a new scene and moving out from an old one to a new one. And it's just overall a, a really unique shot, a very cinematic style shot as well. And one that's great to use when you have the right moment to use. It doesn't work all the time because you really need something in front of the camera that you're revealing around. You can use flowers, you can use a dress. Uh, elements from the wedding day are always the best. So if you can uh, have the bride getting ready and you are panning and revealing from the dress, that's a great shot if you can pull stuff like that off. So the last one before we get into our super secret bonus shot is going to be the orbit. And this is something that is actually used a lot of times in films and works really well if you have a lot of space between you, your bride, and uh, the background. And this is something I do all the time. It's a great way of revealing a massive scene. So one thing that's hard is you don't always want to shoot crazy wide angles, 16 millimeters, anything like that. It's always good to shoot a little bit tighter, but then you lose a lot of that background background. And so this kind of orbit shot allows you to reveal a lot of what's going on in the scene while still maintaining a closer shot. And all it is, is uh, moving around your bride and groom. You're going to want to make sure that you set your parameters in this to be a very slow, fluid movement. That way it's not jerking around. And usually what I will do is also shoot this in slow motion and then move faster. That way my gimbal movement is very quick when it's moving around, but my subject movement is very slow. And it gives a really good perspective and unique perspective. And yeah, I use that orbit all the time. You can't overuse this one. This is one that you probably only want to use like twice at, at tops in a wedding film, but it's a really cool shot and one I love to use. All right, so here's that bonus. Yeah, for you people saying uh, gimbals are overused and you don't want to gimbal all the time, I'm gonna tell you two things. One is my camera pretty much never leaves this gimbal. I have a second camera that's always on a tripod, but this camera will always be on this gimbal. And many people will ask me, how do you hold this thing for that long? And how do you get unique angles? Or, or what do you what do? Because not every shot should be a gimbal style shot. And the answer is this. I screw on a tripod or a monopod with fixed feet like this, which is exactly what I'm using right here. This one's actually made by Jiyun as well. And uh, you can pull these feet up, but you can tripod this down and extend it if you want to. But basically what I will do is I will pull off a steady shot for quite often. And one thing that's nice is even if you're on a place that has a little bit of an angle to it, guess what? My camera is always gonna be there. I can also do pans and tilts using this or the app. So I can use a joystick on my gimbals or the app to get a really, really cool pan, tilt, any of that kind of stuff that's smoother than I could be on a tripod. So yeah, all the time, I'm gonna use my gimbal for a locked off shot and it's really simple. And with these larger gimbals that can hold very heavy payloads, I put zoom lenses on these all the time, not just shooting primes. And I'll go ahead and zoom it and it won't be on balance at all, but it's absolutely fine because it's a static shot. The gimbal will hold it steady because it's super powerful. And I will be able to get a really nice locked off tripod shot and then be ready to move. Because for me, the number one thing about a wedding is being ready for anything. So if I'm pulling off that locked shot and then all of a sudden my couple moves, guess what? I zoom back out, I pick up, and I'm ready to move. So here's my locked off shot right here. And in just a moment, I'm good to go. And so, yes, this is the secret right here is go ahead and put a tripod or a monopod on this and you will be good to go for getting those locked off shots. It is true that a gimbal can be overused, but that is just a shot. That is not a gimbal. 
you can use a gimbal, you should use a gimbal. There's a lot of advantages to it and use them for your tripod, locked off shots, panning shots. You get some really, really nice motion. You can pull this off with the app to make it extra smooth so you're not touching it at all. So hopefully that helps you guys getting started if you're doing it for weddings. If you wanna take a look at a full wedding film that I'd done uh, a little while ago, I'll link something below for that. But let me know if you have any questions about this gimbal or some of the other things that I've talked about, how I use a gimbal for weddings or anything like that. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Please like if this has been helpful, subscribe, and I'll see you real soon in a new video coming up. Yeah, like next week is a really cool one launching. So I appreciate it guys.